It's an equestrian event like no other. It's the ultimate test for both horse and rider. It combines four events in one day and guarantees excitement as rider and horse cut, rein, rope, and challenge cows down the fence. And when it's all over, only one will be called the world's greatest horseman, next. Welcome to Stephenville, Texas, the cowboy capital of the world, and that includes horsemen like the world's greatest horsemen. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Metters, with me Russell Dilday, a two-time reserve champion in this event. In its short history, it's been dominated by some legends, Ted Robinson, Bob Avila, Ron Rawls, but we've got to give some credit to the horses. Four events, it's pretty grueling. Yeah, it, it really is, and the horses do need a lot of credit. I mean, you can't give it all to those three men as they're not, not any of the three are spring chickens, so it can't be just their ability. Uh, the horses have to have heart, they have to have power, they have to have stamina, and you have to have a great horseman also like those three men to help guide them through this event. You get three events behind you and you're feeling pretty good, but we saved the fence work for last and the only guarantee there is there are no guarantees. That's right, no guarantee at all. You never know what's going to happen in that fence work. Uh, there's you can be sitting 27th and have a great fence run. Few people have a bad one, and all of a sudden you're fifth or fourth, or, or you're splitting that last hole for the finals. Robert Chown will get the party started. This is Short Oak, the oldest horse to make the final. He gets to be first out of the box, and these guys have watched the cows. They've, they've come up with a game plan, and now he's going to try to execute that. If you watch NCHA competition, you know that the rider cannot rein the horse. Not the case here. The rider can help, uh, you know, just a little bit more, so you can also watch for that. Yeah, and you want to make sure that when you are helping him, that horse is responding to you without looking like he's trying to resist you. As long as that horse is responding to you, everything is fine. It's when they look off bad or wrong that it'll hurt you in your scorecard. Robert is really looking for a cow. I, he may have one picked out. He may just be cutting for shape. They're not really splitting up for him, so he's going to rustle him around a little bit there and try to get something to happen. Finally commits to this cow, and action gets underway. As I mentioned, kind of the oldest, more experienced horse in the, in the pen, so you know you can expect big things from this horse. He's looking really good right now. Cut his cow pretty good. Wish this cow would look at him a little more. He's getting a little off to the left there. Wish he'd stay in the cow, the center of that cow a little bit more, but nothing you can really hurt him for yet. It really still looks pretty, and that horse is looking good when Robert picks the bridle reins up. Russell, you know, you, you've been here before. You take these older horses, and, you know, I guess it's just a matter of maximizing what they do well and, and minimizing the events that they might be a little weaker in. Yeah, that's right, and you can't get all hung up over something that your horse is weak in. You just got to get through that and then stress the good parts of your horse's ability. That was a good cut. Got hung up there together for a little bit, those two cows did, but he's in really good shape now. He's working right in the middle of his cow. Love how this horse is looking at the cow. Robert's handling him a little bit, but nothing looks forced. Time management an issue here. You know, the, the goal, the usual goal is, is to cut three cows, and to get that done here, he's gonna have to chip one off pretty quick and did a great job of it too. That last cow was kind of quitting him, not giving him much, and now he's, this cow looks really good. That's just the way it goes. You work and work and work to get a cow, and then you chip one, and it's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> well, 212 for Robert Chown and Short Oak. Their herd work is complete. They'll get ready now for the rain work. Ron Emmons will be the next guy in the arena. Roostar, this is a son of Rooster. We'll see if Ron Emmons can kind of improve on that 212. It's, you know, for, for these guys, it's, it's similar to a marathon, you know? I mean, it's just a matter of getting from one stop to the next stop and, and uh, keep your mistakes in check and try yep. to improve and, and see if you can stay up close to the top and give, your, give yourself a chance to win when it gets to the fence. And this, is a, this horse right here can do it. This is a great horse. I've had to show against him and show against him. He, is a, he can hang in there for the long haul. And he's, a, he's also a really good looking horse, has a good move, and you got somebody like Ron Emmons riding him with all that experience, he's really looking for a cow. I think he may even have one pick, but he doesn't want to commit too early. He wants to have a nice clean cut just like he did. Looking pretty good. Maybe a little soft. Cow could sure look at him a little more. Didn't like that cow coming out of the herd back there. 
go ahead and get off of this one because it's not a lot of good things going on. Not the horse's fault at all. That's just not much of a cow. And not a bad decision to cut that one short. Had a chance to get away, and that's exactly what he does. And you know, pretty deliberate in that first cut. And this time, I think he's going to, you know, obviously time could be a, a factor, but expect him maybe to get working a little quicker here. Yeah. As I say that, he's got a he's got another pretty good collection of them out there. Yep. He's going to try to cut clean, take that last one that looks like he could get cut without having a lot of trouble. Oh, no. He's getting a little behind the cow there. This is hard on, uh, this is hard on your score. And now we've got some good stuff coming. Maybe he can pick it back up. Oh, that's going to be a miss right there. That's a one point for Judge. We've had a couple. Uh, we had one before, so... Ron's got a lot of good stuff going on here, but a couple of little things that are probably going to hurt him in the end. Takes the opportunity there to stop on cow number two. So you leak a little bit of oil on that second cow. Now you hope to hopefully pick up some of those penalty points lost on this final cow. Yeah, you want to just stay in the game. You know, you don't want to ever quit showing in this sport. If he can just get a little something done. Well, I had some trouble in getting that third one out before the bell goes off, so 2.03 is the score for Ron Emmons. And there's Ron Rawls as he gets set to work, riding Doc at night. We talked about Ron, a two-time champion in this event, so he's a guy that knows how to come into this final day and get the job done in these four events. Yes, that is for sure. I, um, I was second to him, and uh, they asked me what I thought of Ron Rawls. I told them I, this guy is the greatest. I look up to him just like I would my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't let him off the. That was one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> Le very good cut. Right in the middle of his cow. Wish this cow would go somewhere. You know, this cow is it's, it's staying looking at him, but it's not really going anywhere. It's not giving him a lot of degree of difficulty, and it's hard to plus up on those. There, he, Ron doesn't have any mistakes, but. There we go, pretty average. Not a whole lot of plus him, but certainly not any minus. And then Ron Rawls knows what to do when he doesn't have any big hickeys against him in the beginning. Plenty of time left for him to cut out two more. Or, you know, when you look at the herd work, what's the mindset as you come in here? You can't win it in the herd work, but you could sure lose it. That's right. And you know, and a lot of it will depend on the strength of your horse. If you have a horse that really, really cuts, you might be coming in here trying to mark up. If you've got a more middle of the road horse, you want to come in here and just be a good solid 16, 17, even worst of all, stay above a 210 as best you can. This is looking good. We've got, got a good cow. He's staying right in the middle of him. Not a huge amount of degree of difficulty, but enough there to give you something to mark on. Going to go ahead and give him another one. That one just kind of rolling away from him every time instead of really looking at him and hooking up. And plenty of time left on the yeah. clock for him, too. So yeah. can afford to be patient here, but just kind of chips one off. Looks like he's wanting the white one. Wish the black one get out of the way. Now he's committed, so he's going to have to stay with that white one, even though they're paired. Look back. There we go. Good cow. Got 10 seconds to do something. If they can keep this cow in his face a little bit, he'll be back up there. Really good. Things went well there for Ron Rawls and Doc Ed Knight as they get off to a pretty good start. 2-11 in the herd work for them. Second place at the moment behind Robert Chown and Short Oak who have the early lead at 2-12. We still have lots more to come in the herd work. More from Stephenville, Texas in just a moment. Glad you're with us in Stephenville, Texas, the world's greatest horseman competition. Four events, and we are about, well, just getting started in the first event, the herd work. This is Sam Rose, legendary colonel as the horse. Right now, the score to beat is 212. Sam Rose is another one of our AARP card holders. <laughs> <laughs> Someone I've really grown to come close with in, the, um, in our committees and our uh, board of directors. Uh, a great guy. This guy can cut. I'm, I'm hoping we're really going to see a lesson here. He's on a really good horse, too. Uh, there's no way this shouldn't work, and uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to talk to him afterwards after I bragged him up. Got a guy's cow cut. I mean, look at this horse. Look at that cow. 
The horses that made the finals here. This is the only gelding in the group. And he's good in the prelims. And you know, Sam's hardly helping him at all. You can see his cutting influence helping him out here. Got a good cow cut. Cow keeps looking at him. He's right in the middle of that cow. Horse is getting right and left. I'm really liking this. And looking at American quarter horses, you know, they're great stopping ability, burst of quickness, but you know, if you hang around in this circle a lot, you're going to hear him talk about that horse has a lot of cow. Kind of explain to everybody what having cow is for a horse. You know, having a lot of cows, when that horse wants to watch that cow on his own, because it's something that you, you can't train into a horse. You can't train the desire to do this into them. You can train them to follow your hand and go right and left, but you can't can train the, level, uh, train the level of desire that they have to stay with that cow. It's just a natural instinct and ability. He's got his cattle are paired up on him here. Sure, he's sure wanting something to bust loose. This is a terrible, terrible feeling when you got, he's hooked on the black one now and he's wanting that white one to light, leave. Of course it worked out for him. That hurt us pretty bad right there. That cow jumped off to the side of him. It's probably gonna be a, at least a point off. But now he's right back in the middle doing a really good job. Horse is looking good, everything's smooth. This is an excellent run. What are some of the bullet points that the judges are kind of watching for right here? Yeah, the big thing is the degree of difficulty of the cow, how hard the cow is pushing on the horse. You know, it's, if your horse stays right in the middle of the cow, that will be great, but the cow has to go somewhere and try you a little. And that was uh, pretty good there. Sam Rose takes the lead with that 213. Andy Adams next to go. Just plain cat is the horse. What are you, these are older horses, more experienced. They do a lot of things well. You know, what, what are you looking for in your horse when you, you know, send in your entry form for World's Greatest Horseman? You want a horse that's level-headed and can get all four events done. He doesn't have to be great in them all, but he's got to be great in probably two of them. This is a physical, physical horse. I really, really like this horse. I don't, I haven't been around Andy Adams a whole lot. I've seen him a time or two. I really didn't know this horse before, but seeing him at the prelims and watching him be around, I, this is a neat horse and can really cut. Got a lot of stuff going on here. This, I, this horse is moving so good on the ground there. In the beginning, he got a little loose. He's getting a little loose right there, but now he's right back to being hooked up. Not a whole lot got done on that cow, but he didn't lose a whole lot either. As that cow runs away, he takes the opportunity to go ahead and get off and go back to the herd. Can you read anything about the cows once you, you know, you, you watch them settle the herd and then once you get in there, does your opinion change? Or at this, point, this moment right here, I mean, it's, it's kind of the moment of truth when you're in the herd and the clock's ticking and you got to make a selection. You know, what are, what are some of the selling points that you see in some of those cows? Well, you know, they've probably got their cattle picked, and the big thing they know is the ones that have already been worked and what they don't like about them. But when you get in there, even though you've picked them cows, if one doesn't feel good to you when you're in there, you just, you're kind of pushing it around, and it just feels like it's not going to honor you. You really make you change your mind. That's the big split-second decision we're cutting. This horse is running across there and getting in the ground. Oh no, that's a, that's a big ol' miss and that's really gonna hurt us. Uh, that's gonna bring our score down quite a bit. Other than that, the horse is looking good. Hopefully he can regain some of his points. He's staying in the middle of that cow now and being real physical with that hind end. At this time, you know, you know the guys that are turning back for you, they're talking to you and you, he, you know, he, he kind of crossed that point of no return with the clock. He had to stay with him. Yeah, he has to. That, you know, he's wishing he had a cow to do. See, now he's had that big hurt, that big um, bad move, and now he's needing that cow to jump up in his face and help him. But it's not doing But just like you said, he doesn't have time to get another one. Robbie Boyce riding in. PGI or PG Drive Fire is the horse. A son of Play Gun, and had the opportunity to watch Play Gun cut in his heyday. A great cutting horse, so cow should come pretty naturally to this horse. Yeah, and, um, and he's got a good rider on him, too. Uh, Robbie Boyce has been doing this for quite a while. He's, he's been to a lot of these shows. He's been to the world's greatest a lot. And uh, sure knows how to get one worked. This is really good. That, everything's right in the middle there, staying right in the middle of the cow. That this horse is a little bit more elevated than what you'd want in his head sometimes. But in the cow horse, 
that we're not so particular about that. As long as he's handling smooth and staying in the middle of that cow, which he's doing. Not a bad first cow there for Robbie. Yeah, really good. Got off good. Everything looks good. Try to build on that with a little bit of momentum as Robbie goes back to the herd. He's, um, you know, I think he's probably got a cow picked as late as he is in this set. His help knows which cattle he likes. If it's a bad setup, he, he won't take it. He'll take a cow that's standing there good. But they're deciding right now which one they want. Uh, I think he's looking at the black one. He still isn't committed, and it's a perfect cut. Excellent. I was a little loose right there in that turn. That was a little looser. <laughs> but now he's back in the middle of his cow. Really good. Bad feeling when you get a little bit behind? Yeah, you know, thanks. If, when you get that far behind, if you got the right cow, they'll run off and take advantage of you. Uh, you can be in trouble. Now he's got some time on the clock. He's going to try to go get him another one. Solid first cow behind a, a lick or two with cow number two. And now a chance for Robbie just to go ahead and finish this one off and keep himself right in contention to win this title. You're sure not wanting this to happen. You don't want these cattle to pair up because he doesn't have a lot of time. He needs to get a little something done. Yeah, and that cost him right there. So PG dry fire and Robbie Boyce trying to finish working. Kind of, kind of look at some of the action again right here. This is really pretty, staying right in the middle of that cow. This is the stuff where he got up. So um, I would have to say this, this is just going to be a pretty nice run. Not a big marker, but a pretty nice run. Yeah, 2.11 there for Robbie Boy, so it's somewhat soft so far. Two points out of the lead, that keeps him right where he needs to be. Legendary Colonel and Sam Rose still on top with that 2.13. Robert Chown and Short Oak in second place. We still have three exhibitors to work here in the herd work. More when we return to Stephenville in just a moment. Glad you're with us for Horse TV's coverage of the world's greatest horsemen. And right now, 213 in the lead. That's legendary Colonel, shown by Sam Rose. This is Smart and Chexy. Darren Lawley is the rider. Crystal Ward is the owner. And this is the lone mare in this field, so she's uh, trying to carry her rider to victory. Yeah, and got to be a happy rider. First time make the finals at the world's greatest horseman, one of the most prestigious bridal events we have. One of the most prestigious events we have, period. And uh, this guy is going to have a lot of pressure just from nerves, you know, being the first time. That's what he's going to have to fight through. Just try to stay solid. Oh, no. What? Right there, he just cut, him and his horse were on different cattle, and that's probably going to hurt us a little bit. Horses wanting a cow. This is a nice little mare. Uh, you really can't fault anybody. It's just one of them things that happens. Looking good. Horses using her hip and staying in the middle of that cow. Now what he's got to do is when he walks back in that herd, he's got to be regrouping and thinking about finishing this up and just cutting smooth, not trying to make up ground and getting into more trouble. To make a mistake in this event, you know, four events, we, there's a lot still left. We're in the very early stages. Is it best to make those kind of mistakes early on and give yourself a chance to, you know, you have three more events to, to make that ground back up? Yes, it definitely is, definitely. The, the only problem will be is if this is your strong event. Um, but because the end is, uh, the end's all that's really going to matter. <laughs> that last score, you know. <laughs> When the fat lady sings, oh, now we got a little loose right there, a little long on that cow. That's going to hurt us a little more. He's got a lot of good stuff going on, just a couple of little baubles that are going to hurt him, I think, on the judge's card. Love this horse on a cow. When we were talking about how much a horse cows, this horse really cows. Well, he's going to wind up spending a lot of time on this second cow. Yeah, certainly is. And I think he's going to have to stay with it now. Good job. Oh, oh, that was nice. Darren Lawley is the rider. Smart and Chexy is the horse. And the score there, 201. So some problems for Darren. That takes us right on into Wrangler Starlight, ridden by Doug Williamson. John Lacey is the owner. 
Still a, a somewhat soft, cu soft cutting going on. Yeah, it is. It, you know, we really just have, we've had a lot of good stuff, but we just haven't had the whole run put together yet. And uh, this guy might be the guy to do it. You know, Doug's been around forever, has, has done this uh, sport. He's cowboyed, raised on a ranch. Ranch he was raised on, he was taken care of was, uh, it was uh, it was a real old style deal, you know. He had to ride with a rifle on his saddle and cover uh, 160 miles horseback. It pretty work. He's he's doing good. I really like this horse. I hadn't seen him before this show, but man, what a nice horse, smooth mover. Stay in the middle of his cow, watching the cow. Doug just sitting up there letting it happen. Pretty work. We talked about the legends that have won this event. Ted Robinson, Bob Avila, Ron Rawls, and Doug Williamson certainly would be a nice fit. When you look at uh, past winners, so he would fit right in with those guys. You bet. I'll, you know, these guys have got so much experience, so much talent. That's why they're so far ahead of us younger guys. That's why we do see those guys. And I tease them a lot about being a lot older just because I don't have anything else to tease them about. <laughs> but, I mean, look at the – this work is – this is really a good work. This is uh, this is pretty flawless. Doug sitting up there, not getting in the way, letting everything happen, and he's on a great horse too. He's got his turn back held. Everything is really going good right here. I don't I don't see this uh, I don't see this run falling apart at this point, especially with a good old timer like this at the reins. No doubt the best first two cows that we have seen so far in this competition. So. Doug's in a position here to take the lead. Pretty Scott. big cut there, you know, 15 seconds still to work. You know, he's playing it smart too. If he goes in there and chips a bad cow with 16 seconds left on the clock, he knows he's winning this cutting right now. He wants to get a cow out there and spend about seven, eight seconds and have some good stuff go on. Masterful work from Doug Williamson, 217. He is the new leader. And he got a lot of work done, did a lot of things right, and he's standing by with the third member of our broadcast team, Jennifer Reynolds. Doug, you have to be happy about how that went. Yes, ma'am. He's such a good cow horse that uh, it just makes me happy that I'm just being able to ride him here and make the finals, of course. Now, you had, what was your strategy going in there today? Be smooth and clean. <laughs> and uh, he was... He lets me do that, so if I don't screw him up, he'll be good. <laughs> you just have to let him do his thing. Yes, he is. He's a really a nice cow horse. And this is the first time he's ever really been shown anywhere, so uh, I'm just lucky that he's pretty green, but he's sure he wants to be so good that he just lets me show him anyway. Well, Doug's going to finish the herd work no worse than second. Jake Gorl, the last guy to go. This is Cutting Diamonds, owned by John and Loretta Showalter. 217's the number, and... Uh, you know, that's uh, very, very much in their wheelhouse. And looks like Jake is chasing it right now because he got a good cut on that cow. This cow's moving around good for him, and he is staying right in the middle of it. Uh, he's got, he's got, he's running at him. This is a, this is a plenty of speed, you know. Maybe this thing's just going to toughen up at the end when it's supposed to be worse. <laughs> nice. So, solid first cow for him. A little over a minute left to go, so. He has plenty of time to dig back into the herd for cow number two. Yeah, he's in good shape, and you can bet he's got something picked. You look at this horse's mane, you know, styled a little more for, for reining, so you may expect big things from him there. He's right in the middle of the cow again. Good cut. Jake's doing a great job here. Sitting right in the middle. You know, the young guys can be good too sometimes, <laughs> even if it is Jake. Nice work. This is a son by Gray Starlight. Yeah, that was pretty. He's got nothing but good work out in front of him. He's in, he's in real contention with Doug here. He just wants to get cut. He wants enough time to show his horse, but he doesn't want so much time he can get in trouble on one. And he's going to cut that black volley out. And it's another good cow. Really good. I'd have to say this is the three best cows we've seen so far. Horses stand in the middle. Well, that drew, was excellent. He, yeah, he drew up last. 
Had a chance to watch these cows. He paid good attention. Three great cows. 219 for Jake Goral and Cutting Diamonds. And they will take the lead, and that's going to bump Doug Williamson to second place at the end of the herd work. But you also have guys like Robert Chow, Robbie Boyce, Ron Rawls, very much in the thick of things. 219 has the lead, and we are ready to move to the reigning phase number two of the competition when we come back. Welcome back to Stephenville, Texas, the world's greatest horseman competition. Jeff Meadows along with Russell Dilday. We've seen the herd work, now we move to phase two, the rain work, and this is the only one of the four that does not involve a cow. Yeah, that's right, and the difference between this event and all the other events is this will be the one where the horse relies entirely upon the rider for all his cues. He's not thinking on his own, following a cow, reading a cow. He's completely controlled by the rider and what we're looking for is how that horse responds to the rider and then how much speed we add to the run to get our degree of difficulty and therefore achieving a higher score. Andy Adams and Just Plain Cat start the rain work 10 points out of the lead a 209 in the herd work for them we'll and see if they can build on that a little bit here. Yeah they, they, he's just looking to stay in it maybe pick up a few points 209 I know when it happens to you it feels like <laughs> You're just a mile behind him at 10 points, but this is still the, just the second event. All he's got to do is, is stay in it. If he can plus it a little, that's great, but you sure don't. If he has a big mistake here, then, then his chances are pretty much gone, and he's, he'll only be trying to move up the ladder rather than have a shot at the top. This horse is a nice mover. Good start to this reigning run. Yeah, everything's looking really good. Pretty horse, and he's doing a good job. Don't have anything against him. That everything is just flowing nice. That horse picking his head up just a little bit there in the middle of that circle when he's slowing down to the small slow, but nothing you're going to kill him over on your scorecard. If I knew Andy a little better, I'd tell some story about him that was. <laughs> well, he's trying to make a name. He's he's trying to give you something to talk about oh, as he makes the finals right. here that's in the world's right. greatest horseman. Yeah, at least he's not up here talking. He's down there showing still. <laughs> nice circles and a good lead change for him right there. Setting up good. Everything's in control, flowing good. That first big stop for him, and that's, that's well done. Nice stop. Horse got in the ground hard. Sitting there, looking quiet. Let's him settle, first set of spins. I like the spins and I like the stop. That The spins, maybe his face could have looked a little bit softer, but nice speed. Everything here is looking good. Stop was really powerful, and now he is running down here for a second stop. Got to love that. I got the crowd involved. Big stop there, and now that second set of spins. Now he slowed down a little bit there at the end of those spins, so it's going to be a tough time giving him a big plus in these spins. First spins, I, I sure like them enough to plus them. And oh yeah, all three of these stops could get some kind of a plus. Backs up nice. Andy, uh, Andy might be back in the ball game here. Andy Adams just playing cat 209 in the herd work, 217 and a half in the rain work. His total now 426 and a half. This event is tailor made for the older horse. For more on that, here's Jennifer. A couple of horses to keep your eyes on. One of them is Short Oak, certainly a veteran. He's 12 years old, the oldest horse out here. He's been in this event, qualified for the finals three times in the last three years. His trainer, Robert Chan, says he is really an extraordinary partner. He's 12. Um, you know, I mean, he, he cut till he was five or six, maybe, and then he didn't do anything for a year. And I started messing with him when he's seven. And, and he's been going hard. Uh, in the cow horse stuff since he was eight. So, I mean, he's, he's, been go he's been shown a lot. And, you know, he still goes out there. I can't remember the last time he didn't want to check. So, I mean, he's just really solid. Oldest horse in this field, you know, is that a, is that a plus or a minus? You know, it's probably a plus just because uh, Robert's been showing him for that long. He knows what the horse will do. The horse knows what he'll do. This in particular horse has been set up to win this event so many times and just had one form or the other of terrible luck. I, this is really a good horse. 
Mike Roberts said he can't remember the last time he didn't win a check. Hey, that's something great <laughs> when you're riding them. A third time in this final, and you look at Short Oak and Robert Chown, uh, 212 in the cutting. So with all things considered, a 219 when the herd works. So 212, uh, not in that bad of shape. You're, you're kind of right where you need to be. Yeah, he's in, he's in plenty good enough shape, especially for what this horse can do. This horse can do the roping, he can do the fence, and he can do the reining. Everything's looking really smooth right now. Everything's going smooth. That uh, lead change was a little bit rough, but it wasn't enough to hurt anybody over. And you got to remember, this is the world's greatest horseman finals. And those judges, when you're judging an event like this, it's easy to help those riders along a little bit because there's, there's so much hype and so much going on. So generally, these final scores, you might get a, another half a point or a point. That's just human nature. Got through the circles really good. Now it's all about the stop and spin. First chance to see him get into the ground. Nice pretty. work. That's what you expect from a from a 12-year-old horse. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. That is, he's got a really good run. Oh, the spins are great. Nice. A couple of plus maneuvers in there for Robert Chown. We'll see if he can build on that right here. Everything, he's running straight, building good. Sets up to be another good stop. He's adding the points up now. Really good, another one. He's in really good shape. You know, the, them circles you want to get through them, it's hard to plus in them. But these stops and spins, when, you, when those are good, they start adding the points up for you. Finishing touches on that run right here. So a 212 in the herd work, back in the rain work with a 218. Their two event total, 430. So Robert Chow now and Short Oak take the lead, but we are early in the rain work and lots still to ride. Welcome back to Stephenville, Texas, world's greatest horseman. That's Doug Williamson and Wrangler Starlight, second in the herd work with a 217. You know, and he's a guy that uh, knows the rain cow horse competition very well, knows how to follow up a strong performance in the herd work with an even better performance in the rain work. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, this horse is looking so relaxed and smooth. And Doug, like we were talking before, being so experienced, if he glides through this, this um, rain work right here with a pretty good score, he is shaped up to win something. And he's doing it right now. Nice loose rain. Horse looks good. Circles are pretty. There's no way to take anything away. And that's what you want to get done in these circles. If you can get to the stops and spins and have some pluses, we could have a winner for this part. You know, horses are, are just like people. They have good days and bad days. Can you tell when you get in the saddle, you know, if your horse is going to have a really good day or a really bad day? You know, a lot of times you sure can. And uh, what, what people will tell you, if you go out there the night before and have a bad practice, you're probably going to have a good run. Go have a great practice. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work out good in the show pen, but usually you're loping that horse around out there. You have a pretty good feel for him, especially one that you've ridden for a long time. So pretty. good practice can give you some false confidence. Yeah. <laughs> you, never, you never want to just uh, take anything for granted. <laughs> Be ready when you ride in that show pen. Everything's shaped up. Doug's looking pretty, and now he's loping down here pretty. See what he gets done. And that was pretty. <laughs> a lot of things right. Aggressive with that first sliding stop. Excellent. Staying aggressive with those spins. Excellent. Kind of jumped in that spin there and made you think maybe it wasn't going to be smooth, but just cleaned it right up. And the, le the next three revolutions were uh, very, very nice. So it's a plus. Big. That's a big stop right there. You, that has to be a plus. Another good spin. Maybe traveling a little bit with that hind end, but I mean, you've got to plus that spin too. When during the run do you kind of breathe a sigh of relief that you think you, the worst is behind you? <laughs> when they open that gate and let you back out. <laughs> <laughs> Another good stop in the middle there. Doug has put a run together, and he's breathing a pretty good sigh. Right now. Right now. 
Williams. Doug Williams has been very, very solid over these first two events. This horse is a great mover. 221 in the rain work. You throw that in with 217 in the herd work. He's in first place. Right now, let's go to Jennifer. Andy, you were hoping the raining would end up being strong for you and you had a good run. You bet. He was really good in there. He got stopped good. Circles were good. I mean, I was just happy everywhere. Uh, Mark a good score. You know, just sit around and wait and see what happens. <laughs> Ron Emmons and Rue Starr next to go. I'm in the same boat along with Darren Lawley and Smart and Chexie. They marked a 203 in the herd work, so they need to do something drastic here in the rain work just to try to get back in the mix of things here. Before we reach halftime, we'll have two events down and two still to go. Yeah, and Ronnie can do it on this horse, and he is trying to do it there. You see how hard he run that circle. He's trying to get him some fluff sass in these circles, which is risky business, but if it works out, it's great. He can pull it off with this horse because he knows him. If you look at the herd work, you know, the, the degree of difficulty is really set by the cow. And then when you move to the rain work, the degree of difficulty comes in, in speed in those, in those turns and, and circles. And that's how you kind of impress the judges. Yeah, that's right. The, the thing, yeah, the exact difference in the two is that in the raining, you create your own degree of difficulty. And the cow, if you create your own degree of difficulty, they take you down for it. The cow has to do it there, you do it here. The difference is um, if you create too much for yourself here, <laughs> the hammer's bite off coming. More than you can chew. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> so far, he's looking good. Looking really good. This is one of the first guys to ever hire me all the time to turn back for him. I don't know if that shows good judgment or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll root for him. First big stop for him right here. Pretty. Oh, wow. wow. There yeah. ain't nothing wrong. That that could be our best stop we've had in here yet. Now the spin around sure got rough on us there. Um, he's still not in too big a trouble because he's got such a good plus on the stop and the circles are so nice. Another nice stop. Hope these turnarounds clean up a little. Better. No, oh, that that hurt us. And then that hurt us too. He kind of he's looked like he was going to be smooth in that turnaround. Then that horse just kind of wallered up out of there, you know. And that hurt him. And then I think he was trying to fix it, and he had a little bit of an overspin. And he's got another plus on his stop, so he's going to help himself out with the stops. Turnarounds are going to hurt him. Circles are going to be a problem. They might even get a plus, which is tough for a judge to do plus in circles, but they might. Just going to see how much it hurt him on his spins. 203 in the herd work, 211 and a half in the rain work, his total 414 and a half. Winning the rain work at the moment, Doug Williamson and Wrangler Starlight at 221. They also have the overall lead, 438 points after two events. More rain work when we return to Stephenville after a quick break. Stephenville, Texas, the cowboy capital of the world, and we have some great cowboys competing in the world's greatest horsemen. Right now, Doug Williamson, the overall leader, 438 after two events. This is Ron Rawls, 211 in the herd work, so very much in the thick of things as he starts this raining pattern. Yeah, Ronnie, he's got a real good chance. Um, he's riding a horse that Doug Williamson won the snaffle bit fraternity on, and uh, now he's chasing Doug with his own horse. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> if he doesn't win, of course, Doug will always be able to tell him it's his fault because he won the fraternity on him and Ryan didn't win this. Bad spot for Ryan to be in, but he'll probably get out of it. Nice move. Ronnie's putting a little speed in this like he's trying to make some points up and it's um, holding together for him. That lead change may have been a hair rough, but. Certainly nothing you could pick on on your scorecard. Pretty Smaller horse. Circle now. Slowed down good. Horse is looking off to the outside just a little bit. And depending on the judge, because judging is an opinion, depending on the judge, um, they might take a hair away from his circles, or if they like the circles enough to plus it, they might leave him at a zero on him. Now he's through them circles. It's all about the meat of the program, and that's the stop and the spin. You show these older horses, you know that they have all the ingredients, you know, big stoppers, smooth movers. Uh, you know, is the worry there that they might anticipate you a little bit, you know, in a raining pattern like this? Definitely. 
that horse run down there and give him a big old stop. He had a good run down, didn't anticipate it. He bounced out of it just a little bit, but um, he was in the ground so hard, they're probably gonna plus that stop. And he had a really good turnaround. So Ronnie's, he's building him some points up here. Good. It's so important when you're making those rundowns not to start thinking about stopping before you do. Another really fast spin. Got to plus that. Um, yeah, I don't think he's up there with, he's not up there with uh, Doug right now. Pretty. But he's having a good solid run. A 221, the score for Doug Williamson has the lead in the rain work at the moment. 215 and a half for Ron Rawls and Doc at night. Throw that in there with their 211 from the herd work. 426 and a half is the score for Ron. And let's go now to Jennifer Reynolds. I know you were working on your stops back there. Did you get did you get it worked out? Yeah, he was good back there. He just a little he was just anticipating the pattern a little bit. Uh, thinking about changing leads when I didn't want him to. He just He's been showed a lot. Is there a, a balance that you have to work at here with these horses on this this whole day of events that you got to, you can't, you don't want to go in there too fresh, but you don't want to ease them up too much. Yeah, it's, you kind of got to know your horse. And like I said before, I haven't had that horse, this horse that long, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, you got to be careful. You don't run out of horse uh, for the cow work. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's probably the most de demanding uh, of the four events, but he's all right. We're still in the hunt. Yeah. And so is Sam Rose, and riding legendary Colonel. Shannon and Herschel Reed are the owners. We mentioned this is the only gelding in this group of final horses. So Sam had a 213 in the herd work. Well, if he can come back with something big here in the rain work, he is right where he needs to be. Yeah, that's for sure. And you know, he's really, he's really needs to stay uh, smooth. If he can plus up, it's great. But Sam is strong in the roping and he's uh, sure not weak in the fence. So it'll be interesting to see which way he's gonna play this. If he's really gonna push it hard and try to jump way up, or if he's gonna try to stay there in the 15s and have a good, a good shot at him with the rope and in the fence. You know, we've talked so much about the horse being stronger in some events and weaker in the others. You know, the, it is the world's greatest horseman competition. I guess the same can be said for these guys too. You know, there's, there's some events that they're gonna do better than the others. And, you know, kind of like the horses, they're gonna try to you know, pick up points where, where they're the best and mask their mistakes a little bit. Yeah, that's for sure. That was a little scary there when he did that slowdown. Almost looked like that horse was going to break on him, but he didn't, so he's going to get through it fine. But, yeah, you know, the the riders are the same way. This is four events, and it takes a lot of it takes a lot of riding to have done all four of these events and be able to compete at it. So they really need you really got to put the pressure down on the event you're comfortable with. That was a pretty lead change. He's staying pretty. Now we'll just see how hard this horse will run and stop. The big maneuvers late in this reigning pattern. First of three sliding stops. Mm, good stop. You know, it was a good stop, just not a lot of run. A nice spin around. Similar to the stop, a little bit on the conservative side. Yeah, yep. He's hanging in there. Another a good stop. That was a little better run, I think, from where I'm looking at it. Um, but still, oh, no, that hurt us. That hurt us right there. He went to spin around. It looked like that horse just acted like he was going to back through that spin some, and that's a definite minus maneuver. Even though it was pretty, I mean, the horse is moving pretty. It's, he's just all over the pin in that spin. And the last stop is just a pretty okay. So I'm looking at you know, Thank you. around the 210 or maybe a little bit below. Yeah, 209 and a half is the score for Sam Rose. So that trails off a little bit from the 213 that he had in the herd work. Robbie Boyce riding in now. PG Dry Fire is the, her the horse. You know, and Robbie comes in here, 211 in the herd work. You expect him to uh, excel in the rain part of this competition. So Robbie, I think, is coming in thinking, you know, this is my chance to strike and make a little bit of noise. Yeah, that's, you know what? I don't know this horse that well, so I don't know how strong he's going to be in his reining. But Robbie will know it, and he'll show us what he's going to do. Robbie is strong in the roping, and he can be strong on the fence. So it's kind of uh, up to what he thinks his horse will do that will um, show us what he's going to try to pull off in this rain and you know 
first time I met Robbie, he, li he really almost got me in a lot of trouble. And uh, I got even the first time I wet met what is now his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I set him up, and she stayed with him anyhow. So it <laughs> I guess me testing that relationship early on could have been part of why it worked. You're not implying there are practical jokes out there, are you? <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, the humor is why we stay in it, because the money's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the case. 30000 to the winner in this event. Well, I'm sitting up here. <laughs> I better find something funny, because the paycheck's really bad. <laughs> but as for Robbie, not too bad of a start here in his reigning run. Yeah, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. Uh, like I say, that was a little rough, but everything else is looking... Uh, like it's going to come right down to the stop and spin. And he's running good. And it's a good hard stop. The horse might have his head up a little more than what you'd want in a reining horse, but it's a good hard stop, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that spin. you got to plus it. I, uh, that was a little dangerous there. When he started off, it looked like he might have had a trot. And they'll sure get him for it if they want to. That... Uh, Stop there was a little bit off to the side, but still a good hard stop, and now a nice spin. Robbie settles him. All that's left is a one more sliding stop and a back up. A good, another good strong stop. He's flirting with the the uh, trot off in the departures there, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with this. I think it's going to be a medium type score. Yeah, Robbie is stuck on 211, a 211 in the herd work, 211 in the rain work. So his total is 422. The big number to catch is still 438. That's Doug Williamson. And he also set the pace in the rain work. He wins that with a 221. Robert Chown and Short Oak were the second best at 218. So overall, it's Williamson and Chown, 438 to 430. Still anybody's game. And right now, Jennifer's with Robbie Boyce. I just got done doing the raining, and I was a 211. My horse was pretty strong. Uh, you know, he'd been showed a few times, and, and I wasn't as happy with him in the raining, but we got through it, and we were clean. Uh, we're really going to have to pick up in the rope and in the fence work, but the horse is good in both ends of that, so uh, we'll just get our job done. Hey, it's halftime. Two events down. The roping and the fence work still to come. More from Stephenville after this. Welcome back to Stephenville, Texas, the world's greatest horseman competition. Jeff Meadows along with Russell Dilday. Halftime is over. We've talked about the fence. That's our final event. It's very much unpredictable. But now it's roping. And you would think that would be Cowboy 101, but really it's an event that's going to make or break a lot of these guys. Yeah, because this event is so reliant on the ability of the rider, unlike all the other events we have, where everything is physically up to the horse. This one, it comes down to the rider's ability. It is so much pressure. It's an event that we don't compete at all the time so that's even more pressure and really someone who ropes a lot this is the hardest loop you will ever throw because you do not have to be fast all you have to do is catch Robert Chown on Short Oak they were in second place after two events chance for him maybe to seize the lead right here what exactly are the judges looking for well, they're looking how that horse is standing in the box calm and he did it well he's a little late off the line he's running to his cow good good loop that looks pretty good, except when that horse stopped, he's a little bit off to the left. And uh, if that horse had been right behind the cow and rate a little bit better, they might have marked him up a little farther. Here we got a good look at it. Looks like he's running to him, but see how he's starting to look off to the left just a little bit there? And right here, he's off to the left rather than being right behind the horse, behind the cow. Stop was great. Position might have been a little more to be desired. Yeah, 217 gives him a 647 total. Darren Lolly next to go. Smart and Chexy is the horse. This little horse is pinning her ears and running. Oh, I gotta like that. That was really a nice run. That little mare run right to the hip and stopped right straight. She looked good everywhere and he run at the line hard. That's risky because it is a big penalty if you break that barrier. A little scary there when he tripped, but he made it. One point better, a 218 is the score there for Lolly. And that's Jake Gorrell now. Cutting diamonds is the horse. Little Lancey in the box, and he left really late on the line. These cattle are running so hard. It's Jake did a good job getting there and getting that cow rope for the end of the arena. 212 is the score for him. 431 total now overall. Thank you. 
can see that he's well a, down the he, arena. He, and he reached out there to rope that cow too. He had to throw it away. Did a good job. Really did a good job. Next up is Ron Rawls. Doc at night is the horse. Everything's looking good here in the box. Ron needs to come and have him a run, and he can do it. Horse is pulling on him a little bit, leaving the box. He's kind of gapping his mouth. Oh, man, he missed it. Now, that's a big old three-point penalty per judge, and that adds up to nine points just in the penalty alone. That's not counting what they're going to take away for run content. He's only got about, uh, look like it said, 15 seconds there to get this done. But I may have read the clock wrong. Now he's just got to go get that cow caught and stop. So he's still in the average. And he gets it done. But now he's just going to be trying to fight his way up from being last. Tough We're break for him. 202 is the score for Ron Rawls. And here's that initial mess. Oh, that hurts me watching it. <laughs> Around the horns for a second, then comes off. And yeah, that really hurt Ron Rawls and his chances to win. Andy Adams next to go, just plain cat is the horse. And, you know, Andy's been pretty good shape after two events. Chance for him to make a move right here. Boy, run at the string good, and this horse is running to the cow good. Nice loose rein and a big old stop. They're going to have to mark this run. That was pretty. Absolutely. 223 for Adams, 649 and a half total for him. So that is the best total on three events that we have seen so far. This is really pretty. That horse is running to that cow and rating on its own. There's, there's not, they could do that. Uh, they could give the card to him. Now Doug Williamson, our leader after two events. We had a 217 in the herd, 221 in the rain work. Now he just needs to survive the roping. Boy, he got a bad start out of that box. He needs to just go get this steer roped. And oh my God, he missed that one. That's gonna hurt us bad. He was, he just, he's just having heck because he got so late and these cattle run so hard. He's just got to get up there and get this steer rope now just to keep himself in it. Horse is kind of quartering off pretty bad. Got him stopped and got the job kind of done, but he hurt himself bad there. Yeah, 200 for him, so his total now is 638. He surrenders the lead big time to Andy Adams. Mm. Sam Rose next to work, legendary colonel. Sam Rose can be strong in this event, and he's trying to claw his way back up. Could have a good run. Really nice, pretty loop. Horse ducked around a little bit right there before it stopped, but it, but all in all, that was a nice run. Not as good as the last one, but still good. Right here, he came at the line strong. Horse is running free to the cow. <clears throat> this is gonna be a great loop. Horse kinda jumps around a little bit right there. It took away from his stop, but still a really strong run. Robbie Boyce. We Touched on the fact that he's pretty good with the rope, so a chance for Robbie now to get back into the thick of things here on PG Dry Fire. And he's doing a good job, a big old stop. You know, looking at that shot from behind, it might look like that horse is a little bit to the left, but that horse is looking at the cow. And remember, these judges are seeing this from the side. So that is, it, that is a great run to them, I would say. Yeah, they liked it. 221 for Robbie, 643 overall. And Ron Emmons will be the last to go. Roo stars the horse. Looks good in the box. Hits the line strong. So he's going to be up there in a great shape. Oh my God. That hurts me too. <laughs> Just, it's so painful to see that happen. The only good thing about him missing that loop is it's in the finals and not in the prelims. Now he's going to just have to try to get shaped up and go get this deer stopped and turned around. Hey, I see what a pretty just too late. Did it right in front of the judges. I see where I was wrong on the clock. It's going the other way. Not 15 left, so it was 15 gone. 203 for Ron Emmons, and it is uh, Andy Adams and just playing cat that win the roping. 223, Robbie Boyce in second place. So it's the youngster, Andy Adams, who has surged to the lead here. 649 and a half. Robert Chown remains in second place. And of course, all that's left is the fence. Now the plot really thickens. More from the world's greatest horseman when we return to Stephenville after this. Back in Stephenville, Texas, the world's greatest horseman competition. Time for the fence work, and there's Doug Williamson. You have to feel for him. He was second in the herd work with a 217. He won the rain work with a 221, and then 
things came unwound a bit for him in the roping, only a 200, and that really dropped him down well behind our leader, Andy Adams. But, uh, you know, Doug has a chance to make a little bit of that up, up right here, and being the veteran that he is, you expect him to come out trying. Yeah, that's what we'll see him do. You know, just like we're, we've talked about so many times, Doug is as experienced a roper as there is, and look what happened to him in that roping. So he's going to try to come on back here and get himself moved up that ladder because every place you move yourself up is more money. Even if he can't make first place, he still wants to get farther up that ladder and make more money. It's going to happen. This is a great. That's, that turn was a, a little bit loose. I wish this cow would run a little bit harder for him, but this is really a pretty run. Had to make the loop, but now he's setting everything up good. Another nice turn. He's going to go get circled. Yeah, I have a little bit of trouble trying to corral oh. this cow, and it's a. Mm. That hurts. That just hurts. That's These cattle are pushing on us a little at this show. They're a little tough. I mean, you got to go get up there and bend their neck around to make them change directions. And that cow showed us some of it right there. He, he really give Doug the dirty. Just goes to show you till the fat lady sings, no one knows who's the winner in this event. Doug was in great shape at the midway point. He had the lead. A 2.11 for him here in the fence work or the cow work. That gives him a total of 8.49 and he is now a spectator. Ron Emmons next to go, Roostar is the horse. You know, what's really killed Ron was the herd work and the roping, 2.03 in both of those events for him. Really took the air out of him, but he has an opportunity to make a little bit of noise here in this final event. Yeah, and he can do it. You know that he's going to be going for it. He's going to go try to make some points up, make himself a little bigger paycheck. He's got nothing to lose. You can kind of break this fence work down into several events. It starts with, with holding the cow, you know, here at the end, and it's all about control if you're a judge. Yeah, you want it. You know, it's not so much down here on the end. You don't want a horse that jumps back and forth like a cutting horse. You want him doing what Ron's doing right now. This cow's got a lot of air, and he drove that cow right to left on the end of that arena and got some control over him, and he's getting a really good leave out of the corner. Perfect. Big old turn right there. Maybe a little bit by, but it was hard. Now, that right there is a huge turn. That was hard to pull off. He's going to go ahead and circle. That's a lot of degree of difficulty because he's going fast. Needs to get switched, and he's got it. Heading for that neck. <laughs> Keep that hat on. Nobody wants to lose their hat, <laughs> no matter what you're in. <laughs> yeah, but that was something special. Those stops on the fence were outstanding. And a 221 is the score for Ron Emmons. So the rest of the show may have left a little bit to be desired, but he saved the best for last, that 221. 838.5 in four events, that's his total. Well, that's a taste of what the fence is like. More from Stephenville in just a moment. Glad you're with us in Stephenville, Texas. Jeff Metters along with Russell Dilday. It is the cow work or the fence work in our world's greatest horseman competition. And that is Robbie Boyce kind of moving up on his cow, PG Dryfire. The son of Playgun is the horse. You know, and there's some strategy in here. You know, you can kind of evaluate your cow. And if the cow has, like you mentioned earlier, a lot of air, which means a, a lot of run, it's kind of important to take a little bit of that air out of them right here. Yeah, you need to know your horse, too, and you need to know what you can get done. Um, if you need to mark a big old 225, you're going to leave a little more air in them if it's late in the game. Right now, Robbie's in third, and he's got a chance to win this thing. So he's going to make sure he's got control, but he's going to go on ahead and go with some cow, and he did right there. Nice. Pretty decent turn right there. He's going to get him looped around. Horse kind of shaking on the bridle a little bit, but everything's fast. He needs this turn to be a pretty good one. Oh, man, and that is a good one. Now if he can get circled up, he's going to get him a score. Right now, he knows it, too. Come on, Robbie. A linebacker like in that second turn as he just puts a shoulder into that cow. 221 for Robbie Boyce and PG Drive Fire, 864. Their four event total, and they have taken the lead. So Robbie with back to back 221s in those final two events, and that has bumped him right into the thick of things. Sam Rose next to go, legendary Colonel is the horse. We'll see if he's getting the cow that he wants. 
Yeah, and it's a time like this, Angie's glad she stayed with Robbie, you know. He might <laughs> go ahead and be something. <laughs> now we got Sam Rose out there. He's wanting to get himself moved up. He might go ahead and lay it down, try for a big run. Uh, his horse is looking good here on the end. He's got control. He's moving that cow back and forth. This horse looks to me like one that could get there. And he's got a cow that's going to make him get there. <laughs> and he's going to go ahead and try for it, too. He's ready. Left the corner perfect. Everything's set up. Big time. That's pretty. He's get up there and get looped. If you like extreme sports, if you're somewhat of an adrenaline junkie, you know, this is that kind of an event in the Western world to go down that fence full speed and put your horse out in front of that cow. Yeah, it is fun. This this event right here is why I do this horse training. Really good. Hey, Sam is really putting a run together. The loop that that loosened up a little bit. That might have weakened the run a touch from like being in the big 20s. But still, he has got great turns and great circles. Great run. 219. His four event total 858 and a half. Seven and a half points shy of Robbie Boyce. Now to Ron Rawls, <laughs> two-time champion at this event. Dock at night, the horse that he selected this year. You, know, you see these guys win a lot of futurities and derbies, and they'll come in with multiple entries. And what changes here is you know you have one guy and one horse, so you have to select the right horse, and and you're going to win or you know win or lose, live or die, you know with that animal. That's right. You know the, that's what's so great about this event for a guy like um, say Andy Adams or uh, Darren is that. Uh, Ronnie Rawls and Bobby Avlin, all the guys that have all the powerful owners and all the powerful horses, they only get to mess up one time, just like you do. One of the biggest reasons I had any luck in this event. Things are going fast. If Ryan pulls this nice turn. Horse hung up a little bit in that turn. He's gonna, he's gonna have a little trouble getting in shape back to the fence. Nothing wrong with that. Horse is running hard. Another good turn. He's probably going to look for a left. Wants a, there we go. Now he's coming out of there circling. Horse looking off to the outside a little bit, and the judges might hurt him for that. But all in all, he's got a lot of speed going in now. A third world's greatest horseman title not to be for Ron Rawls. 216 in defense work. His four event total, 844 and a half. So right now in the fence work, it's Robbie Boyce and Ron Emmons, both with 221s. They have the lead in the event, but for Robbie Boyce, much bigger than that. He has the overall lead. 864 is his total. Sam Rose is in second place, but some of the top contenders are yet to work. The conclusion of the fence work is coming up. Back in Stephenville, Texas, final two exhibitors in our World's Greatest Horseman competition. Can the youngster, Andy Adams, pull off the win in first place after three rounds, comes into the fence work as the leader? But as we mentioned, it gets a little tough right here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he is, uh, we've got Robbie Boyce up there. Andy knows that he had uh, five and a half points on him coming into this. He knows what he's got to mark. He's, um, he's also got to worry about Robert Chown behind him because Robert Chown's only two and a half points behind him. So Andy has got to be uh, conservative enough to have control over this cow, but he's got to have enough speed to make a run because he knows he's got a chance at winning it, and that's what he's going to do. He got control of him, and he's getting ready to go down the fence. He wanted to go right there, but that cow just didn't go. He'll force him around the corner this time like that. Ooh, he did it to him again. This cow's going to be a little tough for Andy, but he's still got enough air to go bank something. He's in great shape right now. Cow's running up into him. That's hard. That's a great turn. Come on, Andy. Get up there. Gets up there. Great turn again. He is in the driver's seat. If he can finish this run up, having a little trouble getting by. Oh, he bends his neck over. That's another great one. He's probably going to have to go get circled up. He needs to get run into that cow's neck. Cow's still got a lot of air. And he's right up there where he needs to be now. He's putting the pressure on him switch sides he's just got to get finished up and he's going to have a run it's been a long day for just plain cat but he finds another gear he carries andy adams to a 222 four event total 871 and a half he holds on to the lead 
And you know Andy Adams is a happy person right now. That is more than the run he needed to have. He needed a 217 to go to the lead, 216 and a half to tie, which would have made him second because the high fence work's going to make the winner. Um, he's just got to sit there and wait on Robert Chown, who is only two and a half points behind him, but he put some pressure on him. Robert Chown's going to have to be a 224 and a half to pass Andy Adams, and that is a tall order to fill. I don't care where you're at. Well, Short Oak is the horse. Robert Chown, we'll see if he can get in that 225 neighborhood. That's what he's going to need if he's going to have a chance to win right here in Stephenville. Robert's got to be thinking. He knows, he knows what he has to be. I don't care who you are in this situation. You're going to try to make that 225. It's, it's just too big a title not to. He he needs to, to be second. He needs to beat Robbie Boyce. But he's definitely going to have to go for the gold and then just hope that if he doesn't make the gold, at least he's enough to be second. He's shaping his cow up good. He leaves out of the corner. This is a great leave. He's right where he needs to be. Oh, he went by the cow a little bit there. That's going to hurt us pretty bad. Right now, I think he pretty much knows his 225 is gone. He just needs it. Oh, that, that couldn't have went worse. This, When that cow hit the fence and running back over there, the thermometer's just going downhill on his scorecard. He's going to have to go ahead and shape it up. Now he's just trying to keep his money going. <laughs> Lost his stirrup. Capes after the cow. S going to the head. Circles are looking great. Got a little loose there. Back to the cow. It's going to switch sides. Robert knows he didn't get the big score. You know, we're looking. In, he's got some good stuff, but some bad stuff. We're looking around the tens or so. Between 10 and 13, something like that. But he's not going to go to lead, and he knows it. 211 is the score, 858 the total for him, and that's going to cost him a little bit of money. Andy Adams, $30,000 richer, 871 and a half after four events. Robbie Boyce holds on for second place. Rawls and Emmons finish sixth and seventh. Let's go to Jennifer. Now, can you believe it? Huh, no, not yet. <laughs> Hadn't sunk in just yet. I just have to tell you, you know, it's just the most amazing story for you to come in here and be in the finals your first time and stay with it the whole time, not blow up at any point and end up winning the deal. Yeah, it, it is pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just tickled to death with the whole whole deal. The whole show was great. And, you know, it's kind of stressful coming in. It's, it's a long week, but... but uh, I got to tell you, some of your friends told me that you, you know, you had ice water in your veins and they thought you could handle the pressure. <laughs> uh, I'm glad they think so. <laughs> I get pretty nervous myself. But, uh, yeah, but I guess we handled it all right. Andy Adams adds his name to a pretty good list. Names like Bob Avila, Ted Robinson, Ron Rawls, and John Rozier. Andy Adams is the world's greatest horseman 2006. For Russell Dilday and Jennifer Reynolds, thanks for watching. I'm Jeff Metters. So long, everyone.